Hey, ladies and German, how y'all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And today, of course, Steel Division 1v1. We are here on Column Bells in that factory. Rang, who do we have? Well, we have on the left hand side in blue, uh, this is a Slim Dusty as the Garge Armored Division. And on the right hand side in red, we have Pigeon BO Man 222 as the Ninth Panzer Division. And hopefully, we'll see some 222s from him. I was just going to make that comment just now. So, guards in the ninth. Mm -hmm. Two kind of groups you don't see very often at all. I mean, of course, yeah. there's the whole four, you know, fourth armored spam. Yeah. Tell us about the guards. How's this matchup look? Uh, both sides are pretty even point rise, as you can see. It's only a five point difference, really, throughout the entirety of the match. Uh, they're very even as well in terms of just phasing. Because A phase for both sides is usually just some lighter tanks and. A bit of infantry here and there, nothing too crazy. But both sides really come and just in B phase with guards armored getting the Cromwell and the like Panzer Vision getting all those Panzer 4 J's. But they're both more medium light armored decks compared to other tank divisions. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they take that advantage and maneuver around. Oh, and that's what I was going to bring up as well. So this map here, of course, is infamous for its kind of factory infighting over here. The short-range firefights, like crazy. Yeah. But we're going to look over here at the southern side of the map as we're looking at it right now. On the northern side, how does it play into the maneuvering issues or benefits of both division? I think uh, there'd be more chances of maneuvering around the northern side of the map. It's got a bit better coverage, and it's not as choke pointy compared to the southern attack. The infantry fighting is going to be rather interesting. I mean, I've seen uh, Flam Panzer. Thank God, I just love seeing that unit. Mm -hmm. But the guard armored, it's going to be more about using their fire support. While Fiat or Mr. Pigeon, he has Panzer and is at long range. He'll do a damn good job. Indeed, indeed. Okay, we are going to see some anti-tank over here on the northeastern side for a uh, good old flyboy over here. Um, and it looks like he's going to definitely need to be worried about that. So you see a lot of Humber Mark III's, a couple of Stuarts, and a Cromwell. Yeah. Does it look like maybe Slim Dusty's trying to overload one flank? Uh, definitely seems so. Especially with the, uh, is that the Cromwell? There's a Cromwell up there and two Stuarts, yep. Oh, wait, no, he took, stu no, he took, well, he took the Cromwell out. Okay. Okay, two Stuarts are still a good combination, nonetheless. But doing some maneuver all throughout here, he's got the recon of the Humber, he's got some infantry. If he can make some progress, that'll be damn good. He only has to really worry about Mortar Freeze. And now yeah, Mortar Freeze could be a bit of a pain in the ass on that northern side, but it doesn't really seem to be the case. But against Panzer twos and Runs, he's gonna have a rather easy time, I have to say. Oh, what about the infantry based anti tank here? Uh he can get pack thirty eight and that's really it for Mr. Pigeon, but still, you know, a pack thirty eight is more than adequate to deal with a Stuart. Sounds about right. We're going to get started in just a second here, I think. Yeah, I believe so. And two, one. one there we go. Five. Lovely, we go. lovely. I didn't want to have one of those seven-minute beginnings here. <laughs> and wow, super conservative breakout, actually, I feel like, by both sides. Yeah, I think both sides are really going to just deploy their infantry and then slowly move up the infantry of half track support instead of just going all in for the rush. But, yeah. Uh, we got the Flam Panzer going into the middle and a Cromwell Fire Support going into the middle. So both sides are getting those vehicles to help out. And not a single Panzer 2 or Panzer Run from Mr. Pigeon. Just all light armor. I say, well, he'll see the error in his way. It's just you wait. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I like about Knife Panzer is how flexible they are. You can you can do really well just having Panzer Grenadiers backed up with some vehicles and AT guns, or you could go for the crazy Panzer 1, Panzer 2 spam. It's, I just really love the outer diversity. But for now, he's just going with the Panzer Grenadiers and the half track support, a more uh, light German opener. Sounds about right. Now, one thing I guess I'm kind of always concerned about, we talk about this every now and again, we of course see the rifles against P-Grins, it's going to be P-Grins all the way. Yeah, at long range, the rifles are getting close. They do have two SMGs compared to the P's Grand Run. So, uh, especially in this factory, it's going to be over 100 meter engagement. It is a bit open between the no man's land of left and right. Mm -hmm. So, I do give it to the PC Grand and also River out Flam Panzer. That can, uh, that can do some serious damage. That's fair. That's fair. But if we're seeing more and more Stuarts being brought on in, and that's mm -hmm. definitely happening here. 
Yeah. Um, is that that flan pan looks like it's going to be well? His own goose is going to be cooked, I would think, right? Yeah. If he actually gets into range of going to search his tiger, but Slim Dusty going for the Stuart spam for a phase guard jam, which is, is a damn good idea because you can effectively get a Stuart every minute. And as you all from the full farm, it Stuarts are really effective. Sounds about right. It is kicking off inside that factory like you're talking about, and the Panzergrenz are establishing their dominance early on here. Flam Panzer is moving on in, so there it's delicious, go. delicious cookery. Mm. Oh, that's hot and toasty, right? Yeah. As I said, that's, that's the one kind of English cooking you're okay with, right? Yeah, just uh, plop on the barbecue and let it be burned. Indeed, indeed. Stuart is going to go and start launching rounds at it, though. I would not be surprised to watch the Flam Panzer back away pretty darn quick. Northern side doesn't seem to be a whole lot going on, so I go for it. They're still a little bit safe in that courtyard. Just as long as he doesn't poke his head outside the courtyard area, he should be safe. But, yeah, this is going to be a real tough issue right now for Mr. Pigeon, because he needs anti-tank, and tanks to really deal with these Stuarts. He does not want a overwhelming amount of Stuarts to break through. And you're, you know what? You're absolutely right. Honestly, the handling so far of that Flampanzer is absolutely stunning. Yeah, he didn't rush in suicidally and try to get a few kills. He burnt a little bit and then fell back. He's going to be using it for pretty much ambush tactics. Ooh, and we are going to get ourselves a, a first Panzer two is coming on the map, northern side of the Lukes. So we'll see how that goes. You've got a good looks, bad looks, we'll definitely see. And I would think, against that Humbler, he should do just about fine, right? Yeah, it's, he definitely has some good looks against that. Indeed, indeed. So, of course, today, before we get too much further, when we're recording this, it is Armistice Day. We're going to go up, of course, a little bit late for that, but uh, happy oh. Armistice Day to our friends across the pond. Yeah, and also up north in Canada. I was going to say, so, yeah. We believe so, in the uncouth uh, Veterans Day, but, uh, oh well. Well, so, yeah, still going on in the factory. Yo, know, Slim Darcy is really trying to get out for a lot person. Now, he's very conservative with his church, which I'm rather surprised. If he was moving just a little bit north, he could... Start popping down some rounds, maybe. Okay, maybe not. The Panzergrenz days have fell back into the uh, center factory area. But now the Cromwell and Stuart flanking down south and the late half tracks. It's not really looking good for Mr. Pigeon. But I mean, are you, is that really fair, though? Because we're also going to see a Pack 30E. Oh, okay. The Pack 30 is still south of that. Okay. So it's the Pack 30 yeah. to the north. I think that's keeping those Stuarts from really being um, aggressive here. Yeah. But uh, we do have Panzer II down south now, and at the close range factory fight on its auto cannon can deal with its armor, which is an ideal location for well, the Panzer II. And even more than that, we actually are getting that Panzer 1C coming in, in as go. well. He's and another one of those to the north, so this is. Yeah. I'm surprised. I'm very surprised. He's really starting to ramp up the uh, little Panzer spam. I'm thinking for Pigeon, a real good idea would be getting a more half track to help out inside this factory, especially. The two star mortar half track is calm. That two star mortar half track might as well be a machine gun. It shoots ridiculously fast. Mm -hmm. You can just stun up everything that comes at you. And just look at Slim. He's really overwhelming the infantry now into his place. And those Panzer Grenadiers, they're not in the best location. And I think it's not going to be too too long till they're overran. Even the Flam Panzer there? Uh, you got Pia Arms motor rifles, so. Bro, well, what am I joking about? A PR probably miss. I was going to say, and actually, I think we finally had the first kill the entire game. It was a half track going on down with the infantry still inside. Oh. And do you feel maybe that Slim Dusty is, is concentrating his forces a little bit too much here? Uh, he's concentrating very heavily in the middle, that's for sure. But it's working out because he's not really getting pressured on any of the flanks. So, except for right now, it's starting to get pressured up north a bit. Mm -hmm. But if he can capture his factory. Once you capture it, it's pretty easy to hold, and it's just no man's land between you and the enemy. So if he can hold it, that's going to be a good position to just stage attack from for the later stages of the map. And it's just, it's really well defensible as you've got all of those buildings to hide in. Sounds about right. Now, now in terms of distance, kind of indirect fire, is it just the mortar half track that the armored guards armored have to be worried about? Or what else we're looking for here? Uh... Yeah, it's really just a mortar half track to a C phase, and then they can get the Hummel. We can get an off-map artillery Panzer four and B, but not all nice Panzer guys get it. Yeah, at the same time, the Guard Armor did just buy themselves a Sexton, mm -hmm. so that's more than enough to counter battery anything. Yeah, Mister Pigeon can bring up. I suppose the thing I'm surprised to see as well is that Slim Dusty, in terms of just absolute number of troops on the map, 
I might be wrong, but it feels like he has way more. I don't think it's just because they're all concentrated in the center there. Yeah, I mean, the British infantry, of course, are rather cheap, and he can buy a Stuart, essentially, every minute. But um, I'm thinking Pigeon, yeah, he's definitely spending more money up north now, trying to make something happen. And hopefully he can make something happen up north, because losing this middle will be a rather big blow to him. Well, he already has taken out the Humber. It's taken out the advanced groups, let's call them, as well as a couple of half-tracks back there. Really, the only thing holding him back is this motorized rifle with a Piat, and now a Stuart coming to the north as well. So, P2 is going to find himself overmatched by that Stuart. Question is, will the infantry pick him off, or will it be the Stuart? Uh, probably Stuart the infantry a little bit too far off now. Yeah, maybe yeah, the plan to do was to hide in that, like, lower town area, and then ambush the Stuart as it comes a bit closer. Yeah, and you can get killed with the auto cannon. True. True. And maybe I think that's what he's trying to do. He's trying. It looks like he's trying to... No, never mind. I thought he was going to be going to hide, like you said, just to the south behind those mm -hmm. buildings. Uh, the steward's going to see him at this point. Yeah. He's got to definitely start moving here. Yeah, he might want to run away, Panzer 2. Don't just... Don't just shit yet. In the meantime, those stewards are lofting rounds down range. Uh, half tracks as well. Dear God. So the Germans are losing more and more ground here. Um, but the Panzergrenz, as well as that Fuhrer, are holding strong. I know, yeah. I'm quite surprised, really. I think it's going to be a battle of time before the rifle is just overwhelming. And we've got another Panzergrenadier squad. Too bad he doesn't have a Pioneer squad, because that would really help uh, hold out you know, the factory area. But, yep, yeah, here goes the PZ Gren, and I don't think Pigeon's really longing for the factory much longer. On the plus side of things, at least he was able to get about 440 tickets. I uh, I do feel also he might be wasting an opportunity down to the south. Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, does have that one spa trooping, but um, you also got to realize you know they can't see what we can see right now. Of course. But you know, if he was just maybe rush one half track, see how far he can get, and then try to do an attack. Because damn, that'd be really good if he can get some ground down south rather quickly. I actually feel kind of bad right now that Pack 38 to the southern side of that uh, canal. Let's call it. Has beautiful flank shots on three different tanks. He should oh. be taking this right now. He's got him on hold fire. Oh, that's uh, that's. There we go. There we go. There we go. Is Never he, mind. Is he just aiming? Never yeah, mind. He's just aiming. He's launching into a full sense of security. Another flam panzer coming on in. In the meantime, Stuart's gonna get hit by that Stuart pretty darn quick. Another flam panzer, Ross. Yeah, brave, uh, brave amateur, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, Stuart's gonna get close by. Him. Oh no, you got the train car blocking the Stuart and the Flam Panzer, and the Flam Panzer could get close enough just to flame the Stuart. Oh, I, I, I want to see what happens. Okay. Okay, here comes the Stuart. I don't think it'll generate that much nope. suppression that quickly. And uh, it's pretty much, yep, there we go. Ah. Uh, Pack 38 in the meantime, though, does take down a Stuart to the south, forces the other two tanks back, so it does give um, 222 over here a little bit of a reprieve. Mm hmm. And we are now, we're about to head into B phase very shortly, so hopefully Mr. Pigeon can start ripping out those uh, Panzer IVs and mortars quickly to deal with his overwhelming tank threat that Slim Dusty's really built himself up for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of kind of anti-tank overall for the guards, we look at Piat squads, looking at six pounders, material like that, correct? Yeah, uh, now we're into B phase, they can start getting fireflies, which are, mm -hmm. of course, very scary. 17 pounders, which are, of course, also very scary. And then once into C phase, Achilles, which are, guess, very scary. So they got a lot of high AP power weapons. So that's going to make the Tiger a little bit of a risky choice for Pigeon during C phase. And his Panzer IV, so you just have to be a bit careful with them, especially in the more open ground engagements, as they can't outrange. 17 pounder weaponry. True, true. And it does look like uh, Pigeon was saving up some ticketage there because as soon as we came in, we saw two P4s have oh, wow. completely just kind of apparate onto the battlefield here. Yeah, it was a uh, Panzer 4 J's on, no joke. And shockingly enough, though, it feels like Slim Dusty has been controlling a lot of this territory. He's only got 80 tickets. Yeah, um, I think it's really just holding that little bit on the flanks up north and down south really helped out Mr. Pigeon quite a bit. And also just he didn't it's only been like what, four minutes since Sim Darcy has completely had control over the factory. So it's not too bad, Joe. You know, at the same time Pigeon needs to try and gain some ground somewhere because he will lose at his plus one point of disadvantage. 
Very accurate. Very accurate. Now we are going to see another P4 coming to the northern side. So that's about three on the map already. Yeah. That's What's that? Long. Almost all of his card, isn't it? I would think that there's uh, a four per card. Five. five. You get, thank you. You can get five and three five, and then eight per card and three five. So if you just take one of each card, you're really not going to run out of panda fours unless you're really bad of your tank management. That's that sounds about accurate. P4 is going to establish himself in the northern side. Takes out a half track to start with. With a Sherman coming in, as well as that Stewart, he's not going to see the Stewart by any stretch of the imagination, but maybe, no. just maybe, he'll get a shot off on that on that Sherman. Yeah, it's going to be a rather even trade-off between one another, but um, I think the Sherman's just going to wait for the Panther 4 to get a bit closer before he ambushes it with that end the Stewart, because if both tanks were the bare guns and the PZ-4, yeah, and, uh, he's, he's buggered, essentially. Well, and what's more, he is bringing on in a Firefly. Oh, oh boy. Is that, uh... Yeah, okay. And, and, and a dingo behind it. Or one star main with the uh, dingo, of course, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Firefly is going to be a pain in the ass. Really, the only best counter for it is Tank 40s and Warders, uh, anti-tank destroyers right now for Mr. Pigeon. Sounds about right. Um, this is weird. Tanks are almost leading the way back into that factory section. The Panzer Force and Panzer Run? Well, yeah, that's that's a little yeah. weird for me. I mean, we got that motorized rifle squad, which isn't almost in range to knock out the Panzer Run, but yeah, yeah, it's a little bit weird. He, he okay, he kills a shirt, yeah, the Panzer Four, but um, he does need infantry in front of your tanks, gun. you I'm not gonna lie. Oh god. Especially those motorized rifles sitting in yeah. death late holding fire. Please, dear God, and you have to see them. I know. Yeah, he doesn't he, see he them. He's in range. He can't see them. No, oh, we can't. Oh, yeah. The infantry. Uh, <laughs> Something his Panzer Grenadiers get completely ambushed, but, you know, let's, let's not focus too much on that, I imagine. Pioneers are coming in. Oh, okay, pioneers. that's a good that's There we go. go. The Pioneer Savior. God. P4, in the meantime, is going to try to fire where the Sherman goes down instead. Was that to uh, the Firefly? Yes, it was. Yeah, Firefly well, picks off one of the P4s. And the Pack 40, you're going to be trading shots or trying to knock out the Sherman, but to no avail. Ooh, what I do like, yeah, is that, yeah, you're right, Pack 40's been brought on, and there's another Befela Panzer IV to the north, and I feel like I'm missing a Panzer IV. No, it's, that's only the first Befela that's been out. It's all been Jade, apart from that. No, no, but... Not but one he... Panzer IV all the way out north, hidden by MG42. Oh, there we go, thank you. So yeah, I was like, it's... okay. Actually, I know one went down just now from the Sherman, mm -hmm. or the, 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 the Firefly. Um, but that was about it. We are back to a 50-50 split. That's kind of surprising for me. Yeah, uh, Riyasi again, I mean, Pigeon's managing to take back some territory in his factory. The Pioneer's really doing a darn good job just because they have the CQC weaponry to deal with the motorized rifles and whatnot. And with the Panzer 4J and Panzer 1 helping out, I think maybe just, you know, a bit more elbow grease and more of those stick grenades, Mr. Pigeon can take back the factory. True, but he is out of those, and he, oh, he, he just barely manages to get inside of that uh, factory before he gets suppressed. A lucky yeah. duck there, He's gonna get, and yeah. he gets forced to surrender. <laughs> casting curse, my friend, casting yeah. curse. P4 is going to get stuck into the north. He's going after that infantry, really picking on them, and with the half track there, there's absolutely no reason not going to push that back. Yeah. Which means that the, the Befela P4 is coming on in, so now we have two rather studly P4s moving forward. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking uh, Pigeon's really pigeonholing himself in by not getting a single... Ooh. By not getting himself a single mortar half-track. Because honestly, it would, on both flanks, it would help out a lot. In this fast rate for dealing with infantry and even counter-battery in that section because it's so close. But up north, we're just standing up the rifles and stewards before moving through with his Panzer force. Um, another flank are coming in, by the way. A couple of squads of infantry. Uh, overall, I know the Brits can go and just throw in huge amounts of infantry. How about the Germans? Uh, Pigeon can get a pretty decent amount of infantry, considering he is a panzer tech. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is the infantry veterancy, because in A phase, they have no vet. In B phase, my panzer has one star vet infantry. And then by C phase, you can get two star vet infantry. So I'm wondering if Pigeon rents for the two star strat, where... He only has some infantry to get through A and B. Once he gets into C phase, we got two star Panzer Grenadier squads running around with dual reeled MG42s just shooting everything that moves. 
Mm -hmm. So we've got another slam pan gun, I believe some more pioneers to try and clear out the factory and I I, I really do approve of his slam pan gun play time. Well so far of course, I mean if you have tons and tons of garrisons, you definitely yeah. want to go and uh This is the map for it. This, it is this factory is slam pan to heaven. It is. And I had to get yeah. some love actually over to Slim Dusty though, using that sexton. I was afraid that maybe it was a little bit premature. No, that thing's taking out a couple of pack 40 emplacements. Yeah. He's taken out tons of crews. And Pete Grenz actually take out the Cromwell with a close range oh, Panzerfaust. Wow. Damn, good flank. Good flank. You know, you take but, your eye off that ball for one second. Yeah, but like you think about Sexton, Sexton's are such lovely artillery pieces because it's a 25 pounder, it's armored, and we all know the 25 pounder might as well just be like a semi automatic gun because it just shoots so bloody fast. Mm -hmm. And against all these, especially against Link Panzer, it has more lighter vehicles and relies a bit more on static weaponry and whatnot. Flump Panzer's down, um, by the way. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I had to cut in. All right, so the third Flump Panzer has gone down. But uh, the Saxons are just very useful for standing up the Panzer floors and the infantry, so it's really anything you have to pitch in cantering up. And oh, another Panzer, Panzer floor goes down here. Mm -hmm. And really, just looking at Slim Dusty, he has such a. Huge tank force, he's really building up. He's got two Shermans, Stirrups, a Firefly. Two Sextons. Two Sextons. This is a really scary. Another Firefly, Jesus Christ. It's getting really scary because that's just. That's just such a large armor blob that you have to deal with. True, but at the same time that, that Firefly is being sent to the north, he cannot deal with the P4 and the Befela up there. Yeah. At least even. I don't know. He can get that 1.2 kilometer range a bit, but. Yeah, because hmm. the five flights do outrange the Panzer Fours, which is the the major issue. Yo, thinking once we hit into C phase, I wouldn't be surprised if Pigeon gets a uh, Tiger Two or Tiger Run. <laughs> it's a Tiger, Tiger Two. was a good a lord. A, a Tiger Two would be okay. I'll see a Tiger Run would be a better purchase nonetheless. But um, he can get two Tiger Two to add two star veteran to you, so close enough. Pack 40 finally gets himself a little bit of a kill here, forces a bailout. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Wall Street says they don't care too much. That tank, oh, there we go. The tank finally goes down, but the Sextons are going to blow him to smithereens. Yeah. Or sod. Yeah, and that's, that's what I mean, you know. At least one more half track something really help out against the Sextons. Just saying. I, I do kind of feel like Slim Dusty's armor, while well, he's had such a great wealth of it, he's not really massing it and throwing it through for any kind of share point kind of activity. Yeah, I. You're correct, because he really can just push a flank right now of all his armor and make quite a bit of progress, but he's using it more of a defensive screening manner to try and stop any armor moves from Mr. Pigeon. So at the same time, because he's being pretty defensive with all his Shermans, they're staying alive. That is accurate. By the way, two, both Shermans to the, excuse me, both Panzer Force to the north have gone down, courtesy of those fireflies. So it doesn't seem to matter what Pigeon does. Um, he is unable to fly away with this game, even as we start to uh, flock over to Phase C. <laughs> you, you thought my joke was bad. That's true, that's true. But you know what I think? I didn't say it. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh, that was good. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed how you uh, segue, Jack. I, I do what I can. I do what I, I do can. What to, I'm here all week. I'll, I'm definitely here all week. <laughs> You're here all night. Um, um, so... Also, shockingly, we haven't seen any kind of munitions. Of course, not every single vehicle or even infantry has been able to survive to necessitate having ammo uh, on the map. Yeah. But um, we are seeing now the Sexton is starting to run low on ammunition. Yeah, it still has 20 shots, which really speaks volumes about how reliable the Sexton is in terms of just munitions of play. 90 artillery rounds in a single unit? Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a lot of boom. Oh, and, and, and they don't sacrifice anything for the smoke or that direct fire AP no. either. No, I mean, you, you could use it as an anti-tank gun. Wouldn't recommend it, but you could. True, true. But, you know, just in a pinch, of course. Just in a pinch, of course. If you get flanked by a pesky panther too, I mean, the Saxon, yeah, it's got your back covered. I have amazing news. The Germans have basically retaken the factory complex. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no real infantry in there right now, except for the four M5 half tracks coming in with motorized rifles. But apart from that, they got it. For now. <laughs> for now. Yo, his Panda 4, if he were to position himself, maybe he could knock out a half track or two before the infantry can get too close. I was going to at least get rid of the Dingo. That'll be a small victory unto yeah. itself. In 
Dingo was his name, oh. <laughs> He's now Daddy E.O. Anyway. Um, 52, 40, 48 over here now in favor for Pigeon. So again, we're going to have ourselves a pretty much another tie-up, it looks like. Uh, but like you said, those four squads of infantry coming on in might have something to say about that situation. Mm-hmm. That was, I mean, back to the pulse strikes, too. That's going to be a rather tough nut to crack. And they, all, they do have Piats, and that pound is more kind of in between a uh, rock and a hard place. True. Oh, God. Maybe uh, a factory too far, if you know what I mean. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, he's going to get a little bit of okay. death and destruction, yeah. and then here's, here's his own death. Because the pioneers are actually covering the Panzer Four at least, so maybe, maybe the Panzer Four can destroy these guys. You think so? I don't know. I'm, I'm skeptical because he know. hops in, hops out. There we oh, go. God. I thought he could at least stomp motor rifles south of him, but nope. And he yeah, has all the motorized rifles, and the factory is pretty much in British hands once again. I'll, I'll yeah, give yeah. you. I'll give you fifty-fifty. They own the northern yeah. side. The Germans own the southern side. Okay, yeah, okay, you still got the Panzer Grenadiers uh, holding the areas, of course, and that Panzer 1 Sierra to valiantly defend in that place with no tracks. Yeah, I was going to say, can we please give a little bit of a shout out to that poor guy? He's been there yeah. for, what, 10 minutes, 12 minutes? His, his yeah. crew is bravely sitting at their controls, knowing they can't move if a big tank comes their way. I mean, if you lose the tracks, you become pillbox. True. True. And if you lose your guns, what do you become? Uh, you become heroes. I wasn't thinking of it that way, but that's entirely accurate. What was I thinking? Oh, you're thinking of Pillbox, my bad. Have you have you seen the movie, uh, The Beast? I have not. Can help me out there? It's just like a movie made in the 80s about an Afghan, a Russian tank crew in Afghanistan, essentially. And that's where that whole, like, you know, when you lose the tracks, I become Terry. If I lose my gun, I become Pillbox, etc. comes from. Huh. Yeah. Good movie. I, I recommend it. I mean, it has a tank in it, and I like tanks, so yeah, we go. Sounds about right. Um, I would say, you know, at the same time, though, of course we have some action going on here, folks, but you know what? You've seen this meat grinder before, so mm -hmm. I guess a quick cinematic digression here. Um, no, at the same time, I also heard, like, the whole kind of Soviet thing where it was if you run out of ammo, pick up another gun. If you lose your gun, then you fight with your knife. If you lose your knife, you fight with your hands. If you lose your hand, you bite the enemy. And if you lose that your feet... That sounds pretty Soviet, so yeah. I have to agree. Yeah, I mean, uh, gosh. You have to give a lot of respect to the guys who are able to go to the front day in and day out. They can't clock out at the end of the day, folks. Wow, a lot of respect to these guys. Digital and historically accurate at the same time. <laughs> uh, we are seeing a little bit of concentration to the north. We have, what, two Fireflies and a couple of Shermans, but he's not being aggressive at all. And uh, ammo explosion. Wow. Pack 40 from fun. way downtown. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting that Saxons to respond in kind because we've got three Saxons now. And I'm really, like, this is really surprising. It's such a huge tank force and such just armor. Yeah, Supremacy. Really does he has, yeah. He has artillery as well. He could break through somewhere in all honesty. It's really not much stopping him. I mean, you've got a Panzer 1C being brought down south here for Pigeon, but. Oh, we've got a Tiger as well. Never mind. Actually. I was going to make that one, make the comment as soon as you are. I I broke through. <laughs> okay, yeah. I got a little bit carried away, but still, I mean, the artillery, yeah, Tiger to death, and then Russia and the Firefly, that's a pretty easy kill. I, I do get the feeling, though, that maybe Slim Dusty feels like he's running out of steam, and I don't know why. He, he should have plenty to call on. Yeah, and he, I mean, you just get so much infantry in C-Face, motorized rifle, and tank support, too. I mean, you've got an Achilles now being brought out, but mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Pigeon is... Holding on pretty well. He still has that plus one, I think, really just due to the southern flank. He has here some moved up a little bit. But, um, I mean, it's defending well. He doesn't really necessarily have to have the factory, just as long as he doesn't lose much ground from here on out. He will uh, hold out pretty well. He won has finally died, by the way, as is a rather uh, valiant half track who's thought that charging a Piat was a good idea. Yeah. Uh, and looks like we're getting a whole, like a whole, holy host of sextants coming on. We have another one coming in now, so Jeez. three of them. That's, that's Sl scary. I slight overkill. Either. Slight overkill, I would say, but... Uh, uh, I think I think four sextants is is overkill, but you can't go wrong with overkill artillery. True. True. We're talking about the southern flank. We were talking about the southern flank of how the, the Americans are really... Excuse me, the, the Brits. Wow. wow. Um, how the Brits really haven't been too aggressive in it. Have they missed an opportunity here? 
Uh, I think both sides have, really. I mean, the Germans are now going to move through a little bit and take a little bit of ground, but... I mean, you just get a smaller to armoured force through some recon, and just try to make as much ground as you can down south before you get pushed back, and then just hold, is usually a pretty good strategy, and especially for Pigeon right now, because he does have a bit of the north and north of that river under his control, so if you also do just a crazy push down south, he doesn't have to worry about being flanked up north, really. Yo, I know, if you could get a Panther 4 down south, yeah, I'd, that'd be lovely. You might be getting your wish. Oh, no, there's one cone in the center part of the map. Never mind. Dude, I am a little yeah. surprised. Help me out. Why is that Pigrin only slowly moving the territory right towards it just now? For the longest time, he was manned behind enemy lines, but he was not suppressed at all. Where? Up north? No, no, factory complex. So you can see right now the Pigrin moving across into that first row of real buildings. Oh, yeah. For the longest time, he was ha he was behind enemy lines. He was, there was no stress whatsoever, but he was still still quite afraid. Uh, I think because he's just outnumbered by infantry, essentially, and because Slim Dusty had more infantry in that concentrated area, they considered he is a uh, part of the land. Yo, uh, he's, in, he's not really going to make much ground in that territory with only one panda going there. Yo, he does have that tiger. Yo, it is in an open field. It's mm -hmm. backed up by a command vehicle, so good on him, but guess what? One, two, three tanks with 17 pounders. You may have freestyle veterancy. They won't save you from free 17 pounders. Well, that's the thing I was going to make the comment about as well. As I'm looking here, I'm trying to figure out exactly how. Ooh, he's got, he's coming online right now. Yeah. Oh, is he shooting the sex? Sexton! <laughs> oh! Oh, God. That was a good shot. Good shot. And lots of fireflies were asking him to try and get his revenge, but. Yeah, but it's too late for that one crew. They only get last rights here. I, I don't know. The, the fireflies and Achilles are pretty much going to be attacking him one on one, it seems. And in a run and run engagement, and the, the artillery is falling way too far. Jeez. And at long last, we are going to see a couple of Tempests coming on. Impact 40 gets strafed to pieces. That's one thing we haven't really talked about air power. Is that really a big deal at all? Nah, both sides aren't really. You can't get the Tempest for its sort of fantastic flame for guards armored, but really for both sides, you want to be using your ground units. And because they don't have to worry about either side's air power all that much, that's mm -hmm. why I haven't really seen any planes. Mm hmm. No, that tiger. I think he's, he's. Never mind. Oh, I've... he's down. Beautiful yeah. shot from the Achilles, but uh, you know, hit that guy in his heel, and he's pretty much all screwed. Um, P4 though we're still in the area. 496 to 865, 4753. Germans are leading the way still, with tiny, tiny bits here. Yeah, I'm, I, I really felt like some Dusty. I mean, he does have the forces capable. And now he's actually attacking with his tank force after killing the tiger, getting a bit of confidence. And I think now Slim can take, start taking the territory and be aggressive. He's got a Cromwell Mark Seven, which is an odd sight to see. And uh, yeah, hopefully he can, you know, be a bit more aggressive now. Well, at that point, he, to, he is the real Slim Shady. Really I don't know why. On his hand to God, the entire time I was looking at this, and I was like Slim Dust. I was thinking Slim I've Shady. Been... I was thinking Marshall. And I was thinking, oh man, here we go, tactical thing going on. But I've no. been trying to think of making an M and M joke throughout this entire card, but I couldn't think of making one yet, so thanks, thanks for jumping in first. <laughs> Happy to. Happy to. Um, Germans not bringing a whole lot in that much anymore either. I'm surprised. They can't be tapped out either, can they? Uh, I mean, you can get... Well, for the Germans, they can get one more Tiger, mm -hmm. and if he's smart, he should. He really should have the Pounders in this deck. Yank Pounders won't save you against 17 Pounders. They're much better against... You know, American arm decks with 76 mils, mm -hmm. but it's it has armor and it can at least range and some rock kill fireflies, or not extremely effectively as it only has trove 18. They're defensive weapons, though. They're not any kind of yeah. aggressive weapon. They're defensive, but I'm thinking right now, with this armor push that's coming on, he's going to want some defensive weaponry. But I'm thinking for Pigeon, what's really helped him out a lot of this match is his infantry play. I mean, the Panda Grenadiers up north has really held on their ground mm -hmm. for quite a bit. And just down south in the factory, you know, just a little bit of infantry play has helped out. He hasn't really been running any major engagements for example, I'm not going to lie, but he just managed to hold his ground with his German troops, which is more than enough just holding these small flank advantages. Now, we're seeing basically the guards drub everything that exists in terms of German AFVs. Is that fair? Is that a fair comparison here, or is it just that very, very unlucky? Yagpanzer coming in, by the way, Eastern side. Yeah, there we go, finally. But, um, 
in terms of how they just nick it, like pretty much blown up every single German tank. Yep. Yeah, that's because Slim Darcy is doing the good strategy of keeping his tanks in pairs and not in, you know, one by one. And because he just says he managed to pretty much save up and get such a large tank force role, Pigeon has been much more aggressive with his Panzer Force, and because of that he's been losing his Panzer Force, so he hasn't managed to amass such a death ball, you could say, of armor. Mm -hmm. And also just the artillery is really just going quite crazy now. We've got enough opportunity of half tracks being brought up mm -hmm. to help his attack, and this is what I mean, Mr. Slim, he just needs to charge in with what he's got. I mean, if you lose some tanks, whatever, it's really about that map control in the end of the day. True. True. I am surprised the factory has not taken more devastation. Yeah, I mean, the Germans are now actually in it, using a pants force to rather good effect. But yeah, the, the buildings are still alive. We haven't really seen any off-map artillery, so I think right, the uh, factory is still pretty much in one piece. I am amused slightly. We're back to a 50-50. It seems like the Brits get themselves, they stir themselves and get ready for a fight, and the Germans say, oh, you want to attack us here? Well, we'll, we'll attack you someplace else instead, which is exactly yeah. how they should be responding to this. Yeah, and that's just good knife armored plate. You just... Panzer, Panzer, please. Can't call it armored. Oh, <laughs> hurt me inside. Did I, did I trigger you? Oh, a little bit, a little bit. Okay. But, uh, yeah, that's how you play knife Panzer. You attack in multiple flanks. You're very flexible to rhythm so you can change their playstyle up quite a bit. You can do light armor rushes. You can fight some rock toe to toe or more heavy armor. You can do good infantry play. When you see down south right now, mm -hmm. you've got spar troops and MG42s and Panzer over here doing a good job taking a bit of territory. And like you said before, you know, the Brits are attacking up north. Mr. Pearson's going to be like, hey, I'm going to see what's going on down south. Indeed. Indeed. So, um, Firefly is going to go after... No, it's the, no, it's the, no, it is the Firefly. Excuse me. Yeah. It's going to go after that Yog Panther. Yog Panther is running for his life, but at least he's showing the proper side to the enemy. Yeah, that's uh, showing his front, which is exactly the right way you want to retreat. But now, yeah, so Slim Delcy has managed to push up to his area. Uh, the Pigeon's really buggered, because if you look at his spawn point, it's all just open ground. And Pigeon can't get a tank that has enough armor. To deflect a 17 pounder so i know even this panzer 4 right now he's a little bit outgunned and this is what i mean about using his pandas one-on-one -on -one single-handedly instead of trying to amass a bunch and then attack because the out panzer 4 just got knocked out you got another panzer 4 moving in he's gonna go into the same spot and then get killed by the same gun true true but at the same time with these guys moving into the south He's lost a ton of territory in his side. He doesn't seem to care at all. It's like, you know what? Screw yeah. it. I got the southern side of this, and you cannot budge me. Yeah, I mean, he can make some good ground down south, but if you look at the unit density, yeah, that's Pigeon has down south, and then look at the unit density that Slim has up north. Uh -huh. Slim definitely has the larger fire support base to really make more, more ground, essentially, right now. And I think if it comes down to a land race, uh, Slim would definitely win. Wait, 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 are you saying that's what makes him larger than life? <laughs> you know, I think, I think Slim, he's not really a king right now of all this tank play, but more of a god. A rap god? A rap god. Ooh, a rap god of 17 pounders. Um, now we are running almost close to the end here, only coming to the last about five minutes or so of this game, and really in, in this whole factory area, it looks like those two P-Grants have been valiantly holding on, that P-4 being that pillbox that you were talking about. Yeah. I mean, it seems that Slim Dusty is having enough of it. He wants to get in and behind this P-4. He wants to be able to see him, but it is not going to happen. No, I think it was Tempest. Yeah, he's trying to stun up our Panzer IV so Sherman can actually get the kill there. But it's good use of the Panzer IV. Doing some good fire support. It's a good fire support vehicle. It does have three machine guns and a good HE cannon, so, uh, yeah, he managed to get a bit of a factory and holding on to it, which is definitely helping in the map control department, but it's just looking at a point, Slim Dusty is at the first run right now, it's going to be pretty much even Stevens if, uh, you know, if the point trend continues this way, but Slim is just on the tip of getting that 1% extra, and then a plus 2 point advantage, I think Slim would win the match. 
I think you're about right there. Piat going after that Panzer IV. Yep. And yep. that's it. That is probably going to pretty much have break. Been on point. Yeah. Entire match. Like I haven't seen any major Piat fumbles. So I know uh, Slim Dusty's really counted his lucky styles, lucky stars. Or styles, for that matter. Or styles, yeah. I mean, he's good at freestyle, that's for sure. Sounds about right. We are going to see. He's going to get a plus three now. If he gets a plus four, then good, dear God, there's been a complete collapse of the Germans. Whoa. The Germans have, like, a handful of units. Yeah. Our plus three is still not going to be a victory for Slim Rich. That's, that's true, but if he gets to 75%, then oh my gosh. Uh, if he does, I hope he he's, really he's going to. He's going to. Oh, God. Can he can he get a checkmate by getting his Cromwell to the other side of the map? Because I heard if you get a Cromwell to the enemy side of the map, it upgrades to a uh, Firefly. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. I must have missed that one. Do you have to use a Moonstone for that to happen, or no? Uh, no, it's actually a Sunstone. And oh, do okay. It on Sundays. At that point, it learns Tail Whip, and then, and then that's yep. the game. Yeah, but, but Khan, Khan, uh -huh. if you press B five times, it actually does an Ultra Evolution, you see, but before you do that, you've got to delete your save game. Oh, I'll have to keep that okay. in mind. 74%, we're going to take over. He's going to get this. Oh, oh, he, so owns, so he owns the Look entire spawn area. Up. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, but the second that this oh, P1 yeah. dies, it's completely... Yeah. Plus four, he's getting a minor victory in two minutes here. Oh, wow. This is... The my butt is cleansed. Well, just, this is what I mean by Slim. He he had the opportunity to just make such a large push. And now, just look at it. The map blew all over. He is certainly feeling kind of sad. What's coming? Yag Pants are coming on in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, this is nuts. This is an absolute rat race between both sides. Just trying to. It's just map control now. Unit, survivability, who gives a crap? We've got the Panzer Grenadiers barely holding on to that factory. Completely surrounded now. And the Panzer. The, the, the Half Tracks and MG42 down south running for their lives. Oh god. This is a sort of rat race. And all this, is just, yeah. this is just funny. I, I, I've yep. never seen a collapse like this happen right here. Yep. Plus five. Jesus. I've Okay, the, the only time I've ever seen a plus five in my life is the first multiplayer game that I tried to play. Wow. Did, were, were you on the receiving end? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> but we got more tanks being brought in, and the guards armor that is British armor representing. Just They got tanks everywhere, infantry everywhere. The sections are having a are commuting back 90, and forth. 90% of the map con. I've never seen this happen. I'm shocked and stunned. Shocked and stunned? Oof. Shocked and stunned. Both Wait. at the same time. Shaken and stirred. Oh, you're definitely not James Bond then. He's either one or the other. Never both. No. Actually, I have to Okay, so if you take 100% of the map, does that equal an automatic win? I, I don't think it's even possible to take 100% of the map, but... We're getting awfully close for that, I don't know. I think so. I think if you get to a point where they capture all the spawn point areas, you do win. Yo, don't quote me on that. Anybody out there, if you do know that, let us know in the comments and either one of our videos here. Oh god, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous. 93% before the match ends. So Slim uh, Dusty, who was behind points for such a long time, is going to plot a minor victory at the end of it all. Dear yeah. god. Yeah, that's a that's a comeback and a half right yeah. Look at that KD too. Oh my oh, gosh, wow. that's that's courtesy right there, folks. Of just having drips and drabs, P four you know committal here the entire game. Yeah, just um just looking at the history right now, it's uh pretty even Stevens throughout the early stages of the map. A little bit later on, the Germans do lose that factory and they do start losing all those Panzer Grenadiers and Panzer twos. Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of British deaths throughout the phase. And then once we get to more, like, C phase, it starts becoming a bit more red overall, and the Germans just, they just lose everything towards the end of the match. Jesus, all the, just the amount of Panzer IVs he's lost is ridiculous. Okay, there's a Firefly that has gotten five Panzer IV kills. That, that makes him a tank case, I think. It does. We also got yeah. a P1 in there, but it's not really a fair, that's not fair. <laughs> that's... Damn, I mean, that's what I mean about that Firefly. It's a really nasty unit to fight against, against 9th Armored. And as a 9th Armored player, what you want to do is try to try to get in those one kilometer range engagements. You don't want to be fighting in a complete open field, because as you saw, yeah, you just get destroyed.
but if you fight more on flanking, you know, hedgerow to hedgerow fighting, your panda fours, panda ones, panda twos work much well. Your your tanks are more knife fighting tanks. You want to get in Indeed. groups. Indeed, you, you might you might not shoot first, but you want to shoot to kill immediately. Of course, exactly, exactly. But that was that was a good match on both sides. It's fantastic play, lovely divisions just going at each other, and Slim really taking it in at the end and making lots of headway. Indeed. So congratulations to both players. That was a thrilling game for me. I did not expect that finish. I did not expect that too. That was really bloody well done. Me and Khan, as you can tell, are pretty impressed. Yeah, it was a good cast. A good it was fun. Cast. Definitely fun. So congratulations to Slim Dusty. Bad luck to uh, the old pigeon. I guess he had to fly the coop on the end of that. He didn't seem like he was calling a whole lot in. Yeah, it definitely towards the end. It's just he kept, le like I said, he kept losing his Panzer fours one by one instead of trying to amass a tank force. And even then, he just does not have the range to compete. And also, Pearson, really, he needed some artillery in that match. Just even more to half track would have helped a ton. True. True. End score, 1397-1021. Any other final comments there, Ryan? Nope, I'm, uh, I'm good. I say I'm tapped about well. So, folks, thank you so much for tuning on in. This has been another 1v1 cast. We'll see you guys all soon. Bye-bye.